Good morning. Uh, it's really good to be able to, to welcome you um, to worship again on this second Sunday um, in Advent. A couple of particular welcomes to make. I didn't spot, don't ask me how, but I didn't spot Kelvin last week um, on his return. It's really, really lovely to have you back with us, Kelvin. Um, so should we welcome Kelvin back a little bit late? <laughs> Um, also to mention Francesca, who is Major Kelvin, not that Kelvin, Major Kelvin's daughter. She's been celebrating his birthday with him, so happy birthday to Kelvin and welcome Francesca. Nice to have you with us. Uh, while I'm doing birthdays, um, where's Major Alive? Where are you, Major Alive? Hiding at the back. Major Alive is going to be 80 Hard to believe. She's going to be 80 next Saturday. So, happy birthday for next Saturday, Major Alive. <laughs> of course, we're continuing to keep Brian in our prayers at the moment in hospital. Um, so, please do pass that on to him. Um, is Claire here or not? Claire? No. Yeah, somewhere? Claire Whitmore? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> She wasn't here last weekend, so we didn't get to wish her a happy birthday. We really should let you know that she has turned half a century old. So please, please do rub it in as soon as, as soon as you get the chance. And wish her a happy birthday for last week as well. Didn't want her to miss out. Right, on to the announcements proper. Um, next Sunday, the 11th of December, is a special day um, in our Christmas calendar. In the morning, we meet for worship um, as usual, third Sunday in Advent, 1030 um, in the morning, but then in the afternoon at three o'clock, you're invited to join us for our annual core carol service. So it's always a very special, very Christmassy event. Our musical sections take part. Um, do think about who you can invite along next Sunday, three o'clock in the afternoon for our core carol service. A reminder that there are flyers um, detailing the whole of the Christmas program in the foyer. Um, I'll draw your attention now to one or two more events on there. Obviously, there's next week's carol service, but tomorrow at 1.15, it's the occasion of our cameo carol service that's taking place here at the hall, 1.15 tomorrow. Um, then Sunday, the 18th of December, so two weeks today, we've got our young people's carol service. Um, time for this is 10.30 in the morning. So next Sunday, 3 o'clock in the afternoon for the carol service. Sunday after our children's carol service is at 10.30 in the morning. Then on Christmas Eve, you're invited to um, a candlelit carol service at six o'clock. Um, do please take the flyers, give them out to, to whoever you think might be interested in coming along. People are particularly receptive to invitations to church at this time of year. Um, so do think who you might be able to invite along over the next couple of weeks. Uh, following the meeting this morning, the band will again be caroling in the upper precinct. Um, a reminder that volunteer collectors uh, much appreciated, uh, both for, for this lunchtime and also for the, um, for the couple of weeks following the rest of the carol season. Um, please do take a look at the lists in the foyer, um, add your name to the list if you're able to help out in this way. Uh, just to remind you of the couple of messages from Gemma now, if anyone's able to support the Christmas present appeal this year, please do bring presents um, either on a weekday or on a Sunday. Uh, last date for collection is next Sunday, the 11th of December. Um, particularly in need of presents for under twos and gift vouchers for older teens. Um, items for all ages are welcome, though. They do need to be brand new and they need to be unwrapped so that they can see what's, what's there. Thank you. Uh, Gemma's also in need of volunteers to help with sorting, boxing up the donations um, for the present appeal. That's Monday the 12th and Tuesday the 13th of December are the days set aside for that. If you're able to spare anything from half an hour um, to a, a half a day, um, I know she'd be most grateful. If you're unable to do those days, there still might be options over this week. So see Gemma if you'd like to help out. Okay, I think that's about it. Let's um, say a prayer before I hand over to Andrew and Valerie. Dear God, as we make our way through this busy Advent season, we just ask that you'll come and be with us now as we meet in worship. Thank you for this opportunity to come together. Thank you for this time where we're able to, to quieten ourselves, um, to take a step back and just to, to spend time with you. 
Help us to draw close to you just now. We pray that you'll bless Andrew and Valerie as they lead our worship. Amen. Thank you, Mark. Now, whilst we've been welcoming some that wouldn't normally be in worship with us this morning, I didn't get a chance to mention that our Elijah's little cousin, Freddie, is here this morning and he's brought his mum and dad along as well, Ben and Lindsay. So would you like to welcome little Freddie? <laughs> Come all the way from Yorkshire. Uh, to have a couple of nights at our house and we're really enjoying that, so that's lovely. Um, today it was announced last week that we were to have the enrolment of a new adherent, uh, Kelly Maluko. Well, sadly, a phone call last night from her mum uh, confirmed that Kelly is unwell, she's got a chest infection and her brother Delroy's not missing out on all the sympathy, he's got uh, tonsillitis. Um, so we really pray for both of them. I know Kelly will be really sad not to be able to be here and make that commitment. So we're postponing that until January. Um, and I'm sure that that will be a wonderful occasion on that day. It's good to see you all here in worship. We've got more and more people arriving as we've had our welcome. But we're going to commence by singing the wonderful song, Make Way, Make Way. For Christ the King in splendour arrives, fling wide the gates and welcome him into your lives. Would you like to stand and we'll sing the four verses through. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. And we say thank you to Helen and Rosie for lighting our two candles on the Advent wreath. Make way for Christ the King. Let him enter in. As we quiet our hearts and minds for prayer, we sang in those verses the reason for his coming to earth. He comes the broken hearts to heal. So many broken hearts in and around this world today. 
the prisoners to sin to free, the deaf to hear, the lame to dance, the blind to see. Not always in the physical sense are we granted those things, but those who are deaf to hearing his words, those who are blind to see God in this world, well, they're made to see. And those who mourn with heavy hearts, who weep and sigh with laughter, joy and royal crown, he'll beautify. Oh, what lovely words. And so during our time of prayer, we're going to bring those people that we've just sung about to God. We're going to remember before him those who are in hospital just now. And we especially pray for Major Brian and his family. We think of Nellie Worrell and her family. And we pray for Ian Jessup and his family. And we thank God that the surgery went well, that there is no sign of cancer now. But what a long journey ahead Ian has. Living life as an amputee, but praise God, living life, living life. There will be those who you know, who will be on your hearts and minds this morning. And so as we sing this lovely chorus, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Let's pray that as we sing. So that all those people that we are concerned for this morning will know, will know his peace. Let's sing. you for the peace you bring to our hearts and lives this day and as we focus on you this morning throughout this time of worship I pray a real blessing of your peace to descend upon us so that whatever we face in the coming days in this coming week we will be able to remain strong in our faith and strong in our determination to serve you because we have deep within us that peace. Lord, we thank you because you hear our prayers, both the spoken and the unsaid. 
And Lord, as we've bowed before you just now in these moments, I thank you that you have heard our hearts whispers, that you are aware of those for whom we are concerned. And your concern for them is there as well. And so we ask that you will answer our prayers for each one, that you will come especially near to not only those in hospital, but those who are unwell at home. And we lift to you Kelly and Delroy just now. We lift to you David Clifford, whose health has really deteriorated in recent weeks. And there are others, Lord, all known to you, but we ask a special blessing for each one. Continue to be with and support the Lloyd family as they mourn not only the loss of Val, but the loss of Denise as well. Lord, may they know your presence near throughout this Christmas season. Thank you for all that you mean to us and thank you that we are able to share your great love with others and the message of that love, the message of you, the precious gift given at Christmas as we go out with the band and they play out that message through music, O oh Lord, please bless all the efforts of the band and all the carol services that will be held. May people hear afresh the message of your birth and the reason why you came. And Lord, we ask your blessing upon this worship this morning. And we ask that as we offer our worship to you, your heart will be blessed also. For we make our prayer in and through your precious name. Amen. Amen. Now the YP band are going to play something that Kel Kelly has requested. And so, Kelly, when you watch this service at some stage this week, we hope you're blessed as the band play Carol of the Bells. Thank you. wonderful a few missing this morning but um the senior man that stepped in did ever so well <laughs> thank you and i'm going to look forward to um giving our offering well look forward we, we hope you are um and then we're going to have the message from the songsters please
Shall we pray? And Lord, we remind you of those beautiful words about the servant king and giving back. We give back all we can, Lord, in our monetary gifts this morning to be used to extend your kingdom here in this place. We ask all these things now, Lord, in and through your wonderful name. Amen. And now the songs are going to bring their song this morning. It's the Emma Davis um, song of Ring Out Those Bells. Songsters for their message this morning. Seb for the choice. Ring out those bells about the baby boy who saves mankind. And that's the message of Christmas, isn't it? That Jesus came into this world, a dark world that needed the light of that baby boy. And that's the same message for each one of us today, isn't it? As this day was prepared for Kelly's um, commissioning uh, and enrolment, um, when she's not here, we're still using some of the things that she's chosen because clearly it's Christmas. And so the next song we've chosen is Kelly's. So Kelly, I hope you enjoy this. <laughs> Ding dong, merry on high. And uh, during the singing of these um, three verses, the youngsters can go and enjoy the activities prepared for them this morning. So let's stand and we'll sing through these three verses, please.
Thank you. Now, I'll bow readings brought in this morning by um, Jonathan and Deborah, please. And the reading this morning is taken from Luke, Luke chapter 1. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were upright in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commandments and regulations blamelessly. But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren and they were both well on in years. Once, when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as a priest before God, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshippers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing in the, at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to give him the name John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from birth. Many of the people of Israel will he bring back to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. In the sixth month, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Amen. We say thank you to Deborah and Jonathan for bringing to life that reading that is very familiar to us, isn't it? And uh, we've heard it afresh this morning. We thank God for his blessing upon it. Now we're going to turn to the band. Thank you.
thank the band and uh, Sam for leading them this morning in that lovely, lovely arrangement of Away in a Manger, beautiful setting. Now we're going to sing together another familiar but well-loved carol, Silent Night, Holy Night, All is Calm, All is Bright. You can remain seated as we sing. Thank you. Let's pray. And thank you, Jesus, for the promise to always be with us. And we believe you are here with us right now. We thank you for the moving of your spirit amongst us. And we pray that as uh, we listen and as I've listened to your words and are given them to share, I pray that we will all receive something, something anew from the familiar that will help us and strengthen us uh, to be all that you want us to be during this Advent time. So hear our prayer, Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Just got to tell you a little story about Kelly. And uh, I was messaging her oh, beginning of the week and saying, you know, I'm planning next Sunday, looking forward to it. And she was excited. And I said, you know, do you want to say a few words? And she said, oh, yes, yes, I'll give my testimony. And I said, and do you want to choose a song or a carol? Because it is Advent, you know, whichever you want to have. And she came back and she said, the one that's Gloria in the highest. Gloria in the highest. So I went back to her and I said, well, do you mean... Ding dong merrily on high, where the chorus goes and a tight. Gloria, Hosanna in excelsis. And she said, yes. 
that's the one. <laughs> so we had fun with our messaging. But what a lovely choice because she wanted to sing her praises to God on high. And that's what we're here for each Sunday to worship him and to offer our praise. Thinking about surprises this morning, I wonder how you are with surprises. Do you, are you one of those people that really likes a surprise? Especially a nice one, you know? Perhaps a surprise party that they've planned and you're expecting going out for a meal on your own with your loved one and they take you on a diversion and you open up to a big room of loads of people. I wonder what you feel about surprises. I like the kind of surprises of flowers, you know? <laughs> Trying to catch you up. <laughs> I guess we all, some, in some respect, like a nice surprise. Well, the Christmas story found in the New Testament is absolutely full of surprises. And funnily enough, the element of surprise should have been less than it was. What seemed like the unexpected had actually been told about hundreds of years before. Throughout the Old Testament, God was speaking through his prophets, preparing the way of the Lord, announcing the coming Messiah. And we know those familiar words from Isaiah, a child is born to us, a son is given to us, he will be our ruler, he will be called wonderful counsellor, mighty God, eternal father, prince of peace. But he didn't say when this event would happen. Luke chapter 1, as we heard, tells the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth, who was Mary's cousin. Zechariah was told before anyone else that God was setting in motion his own visit to earth. Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth were known for their personal holiness. They loved God. They trusted and obeyed him. And Zechariah was a priest at the temple. But they shared the pain of not having children, which in the Jewish culture was a sign of not having God's blessing upon them. Zechariah, on a trip to the temple, something not out of the ordinary, was given the surprise of his life. It was Zachariah's duty to enter the restricted area of the temple called the Holy Place, the Holy of Holies, to pray on behalf of the community. And suddenly, much to his surprise, he came face to face with an angel who introduced himself as Gabriel. And he said, as if this wasn't a big enough surprise, the angel told him the most unexpected news, that Elizabeth, his wife, was to have a son, and that he should be called John. The angel Gabriel explained that this son would be filled with the Holy Spirit and would eventually prepare the way for the awaited Messiah. Well, that's a lot to take in, folks, isn't it? Seeing and hearing an angel, being told that he and his wife would actually have a son, and then that he, this son, would be significant in the coming of the awaited Messiah. Have you noticed through scripture that it always seems to be the angels who spring the surprises? Well, remember how Mary was visited by the angel Gabriel. And again, what a surprise that will have been. The young girl, Mary, engaged to be married, getting on with her ordinary life, and suddenly the surprise is sprung. And we read in verse 29, Mary was deeply troubled well, that's got to be a bit of an understatement, hasn't it? 
horrified, I would have thought would be the word. Because a woman to be with child out of wedlock back in Mary's day was a hanging offence. Well, not actually a hanging offence, but she would expect to be dragged to the outskirts of the town and stoned by the other women. But knowing this, the angel said, do not be afraid. And we later read in Luke 1 that Mary sings her praises to God. She realised that she is chosen and that God will take care of her because she is being entrusted with God's own Son, the Messiah, our Saviour. And Mary, like Elizabeth, was told by the angel that she would have a son, but that she should call him Jesus. And as we continue to read and enjoy the familiar story unfold, we remember that the surprises continued. And as the time came for the baby to be born, another shocking surprise came from Emperor Augustus when he ordered a census, which meant that Joseph and the heavily pregnant Mary had to make the journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Again, this was foretold. It was prophesied many years earlier by the prophet Micah. The surprises continue. No room could be found in the inns. And the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, was born in a stable. Not a beautiful palace or a magnificent temple, but in the lowly, humble place amongst the hay a home for the animals, a stable. When we consider those surprises and shocks in the lives of Mary and Joseph, they had to leave home, travel for miles and take residence in a stable. But that wasn't the end of it. During the early hours, the baby was born, the Messiah, Emmanuel, the Saviour, Jesus. And we read of further surprises found in Luke chapter 2. Some shepherds who had the surprise of their lives, having what they thought was just an ordinary night, quietly keeping watch over their precious flocks, out on the hills, looking down on the sleepy town below. The quiet was interrupted. The darkness was filled with light of the surprise visit of a whole host of angels singing and proclaiming the message of the birth in Bethlehem. And after hearing the news, the shepherds didn't hesitate. They hurried to find the Christ child and they worshipped him. The story continues. The surprises continues. To the wonderful special star shining in the east, guiding the wise men as they travelled to see the Christ child. And when we consider the shepherds and eventually sometime later the wise men, they came into the very presence of God as they searched for this special baby and found God there in the child. What a difference that night made. What a difference the Lord Jesus made to those individuals. Mary, Joseph, the innkeeper, the shepherds, the wise men, 
were never the same again. And over time, over years, the Lord's ministry continued to show surprises as he healed the sick. He cared for those lost. Even to the shocking, unexpected to su surprise of an old rugged cross and the amazing Easter morning surprise of a risen Lord. God, our God, is the God of surprises. And some of us this morning can rejoice because we know for ourselves that when we come into the presence of Jesus, when we bow down before him and offer ourselves to him, then life is never, ever the same again. I know without doubt that he is a God of surprises. I never cease to be amazed at his workings in my own life. I never cease to be amazed at the answer to prayers. And I know he will continue to be a God of surprises as he works out his plan in my life and as I see his plan being worked out in yours. Friends, let's be careful in the coming days of the busyness and preparations, not to be so busy that we miss the surprises that God brings today. Life can become very monotonous, very stressful, and sometimes unhappy. If all our plans are made without Christ at the center, as we hear the familiar story, let's ask God to give afresh those surprises for us as we hear afresh those words. And let's keep the focus on him and look forward to the surprises in store for us this Christmas time for those we love from God himself. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this special time of year, this season of Advent, a time to prepare for the celebration of your birth, a time to prepare our hearts and minds to receive you afresh into our lives. As we consider the familiar story, help us to be aware of the miracles that took place. Miracles from our God of miracles, our God of surprises. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you came into our world, a light in the darkness. Oh Lord, please bring your light into the darkness of our lives and the lives of those around us. In the busyness of these days, help us to keep our focus on you, keeping you at the centre of everything we prepare and everything we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing those words of Isaiah, wonderful counsellor, mighty God among us. Let's stand and sing together.
now a benediction. God our Father, help us keep watch and strengthen our faith as we wait for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please find us ready and prepared to serve and praise you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And God bless you all.